Okay, yeah, Ubisoft Blue Byte, you've probably heard about us. Uh, quite the big, big studio. And uh, as, as he was saying, I want to speak to you about diary study benefits. Has any one of you ever done a diary study on their, on their games? Yes, no, <laughs> no one, okay. So we have, we have been doing this for quite a few years, and we have been doing this really in depth with Anno 1800. And uh, yeah, I want to speak to you about this a little bit. So as he was saying, my name is Gregory. I have been working for Ubisoft nearly eight years now. Uh, I have been working the whole time in the user research department. And what we do there is basically user experience evaluation of the games. So we have several methodologies. And one of them is diary study. One of them is like play testing, inviting people to play your game, get some feedback, and then move on in iteration. Uh, due to the fact that I work in the user research department, I've been working on 33 games. That's not something that normal people ha have. Like you work on a project three years in a row or something, and then you're done, and then you have one project. And so because I'm, I work for the whole group of Ubisoft, there's several titles that come in the, the lab. We do one or two tests, sometimes 10 tests, 15 tests. So that's really cool. So, so you have a huge list of games that you can brag about. <laughs> that's great. Um, yeah, and we have been working on Anno 1800, as I was saying. Uh, it will be released next week, as you might know. Uh, uh, there's also an open beta. It was three years in development, and we did five diary studies for them in the last two years. And you might ask yourself, what is this whole diary study thing about? So let's give you a short refresher, right? The word already tells you, diary, it has something to do with this nice book where you write your stuff in. So. Uh, yeah, the player basically writes down his experience, right? In, in any kind of form. You, you, you either give him a fill-in document, a structured fill-in document, or you send him a, a web survey, or he uses some kind of app where, where he can like grab a screenshot of the game or something, and then he says, you know, this and that, I, I did like it or I didn't like it. And then what's good about it, he's in his own environment. So, so is if, if it's a mobile game, he's like on the bus or wherever he plays, and if it's a PC game, he's at home, at his own computer. He has all his general surroundings. And so, so it's easy for him to, to participate. It runs over a longer period of time. So what we typically do, we, we let these diary studies run over 14 days. Uh, but we had some diary studies run over, over a whole month, and sometimes just seven days or something like that. So it runs over a, a certain long period of time. Um, <clears throat> At the end, when the players collected their entries, what they do, they, they kind of s send them in. Or if it's a web survey, obviously, they're in your database right away. So what do you do with all this stuff? When, when, you, when you get that, you analyze the results, right? So, so you have lots of data that the players have sent in. You have some data from the games themselves. And then in the end, that's our job, basically. We go through all the data, and we communicate that to the development team. So that, that's the diary study, in, basically, in a nutshell for you. And let's show a few of the pros and cons of diary studies. So from our perspective, uh, one of the pros, obviously, is that because the player is at home, you're understanding his own surroundings, right? His, his, his problems with like, his internet connection, maybe, sometimes, or with his controller, or with, with his things, right? In our lab, obviously, everything is the same, the computer's the same, the controls is the same, and at home, the players have their own stuff, and this can have an impact on the player experience, obviously. Um, then, what's great, you get a long-term insight into the player behavior, because it runs over 14 days. Players submit their data, for example, every day, or every two hours, or every certain amount of in-game time, and so you can learn how, like, uh, this develops through the game, and then also when the game is really long, when it's like 120 minutes long, uh, 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 hours long, you can sometimes gather some data for the late part of the game and not like the early part of the game where it's easy to do a test in, in the office, right? And then also, if you have a huge amount of players in your diary study, you can see how they naturally drop out. So, so you kind of get some insights into retention, and that's really great. Um, what's obviously a 
positive side is it can be run remotely. So if, if you have a, a, a set of players that you want the game to test, they can be everywhere on the world. That's, that's not a problem, right? Or if you have people that, that, that can't come to your office, for example, we have a few players that have disabilities and they can't come to the office to test, but then they can play the game at home and give you their feedback. So that's really good. Um, <clears throat> then, uh, because it runs over a long time, you can use regular tracking that you would use for the live part of the game later on. You can use that in the diary study as well. Obviously, the development team has to integrate that in the game before the diary study runs, but then you can use that as a test run, and then you have the qualitative data of the tracking and uh, 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 the quantitative data of the tracking and the qualitative data of the players, where they basically said, I like this, I didn't like this. So that is great, because then you can kind of correlate these data streams and learn something about that for the future. And then also, what I really like about uh, diary study methodology is that it's rather fle flexible, right? If you want just a few feedbacks, then just ask them a few questions, like, what was your main emotion today, right? And if you want lots of feedback, you can have like huge, huge things that they have to fill out and stuff like that. And then also you can talk with the development team back and forth what kind of data they want and stuff like that. So it's really flexible. What are some downsides, uh, downsides from, from our perspective? Uh, one is that because it's so much personalized data, the stuff is obviously affected by the player themselves, by their surroundings and all this stuff. So you get lots of positive or negative subjective experiences, and it's obviously affected by cognitive biases. And also, because you're, as a user researcher, you, you, you are basically carrying the test, and you read the stuff every day when it comes in, and then sometimes you have your story in your own mind. You read in between the lines of the player, and then you think, oh, it's this kind of player, or it's that kind of player. So you sometimes over, overvalue certain things that they say or stuff like that. So that, that can be a problem. And then also, it's sometimes a bit hard to select these players because it runs over a long time. So when you say, OK, uh, for example, you can you play in our stu diary study? And you say yes, and then we say, okay, it's, it runs three weeks, and you have to play at least two hours every day. And then you go like, I, I don't know if I have the time, right? Uh, I have a work, uh, uh, I need to study, or something like that, sorry. So that's a problem. And then also, what sometimes is a problem, uh, if you have just a few players, then you might have one player that hardly gives any feedback. He just says something from time to time, and that's not, that's not what you want. You want people that are vocal, that can like, actually tell you what might be a problem or what's weird. Or... So that, that, that can be a problem as well. And then, obviously, as I was pointing out, it runs over a long time. It has lots of players, so you get lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of data points. So it's a lot of effort. So that's one of the things why we, as a big studio, can do these things. But um, as we will later see, you can also do this in a much smaller scale. So what are the key findings from our side with this uh, methodology, with these five tests for ANO? Uh, <clears throat> to give you the candy right away, basically, what we found was due to the close communication and the really early feedback that we received from the community, basically, we were, e we were easily uh, iterating in a quick cycle about some of the features, right? Because some of the features sometimes could even be changed while the study was still running, right? Someone would, would complain on day two about something, and then we would tell that to the team, and then the team would patch the game overnight, and then the next day it would be fixed, and you would get new feedback on, on, on the thing. And that, that's great. The other thing was, because there was some kind of direct link between players and the developers with just us in between as a immediate, uh, 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 yeah, uh, person talking to in between, uh, we had like great player involvement because they, they felt hurt, they felt like, oh, uh, I'm in close contact with the dev team, and also the developers were like, oh, this is so amazing, you know, uh, we have feedback from the day, uh, first day, and it's so much feedback, and we can improve quickly, and so both sides were really happy, everyone was enthusiastic, sharing their ideas, getting work done, it was awesome, right? Um, 
And then also, and especially for Anno, because it's such a long time to play through a single game, uh, it's really great to have this long-term feedback. Because you can then see that at the end of the game, for example, uh, there is some problems. Or there's the end game, and it, that's boring, right? The, the beginning of the game is cool, and then everyone reaches the end game, and then you have, you have the idea this mechanic will be working great in the end game, but it doesn't. And, and that's, this is really good, because you can learn something about these long-term motivators and about the lame get contents. And also, you can see that certain features work at the beginning but don't work at the end, while other features are complicated and hard to understand at the beginning, but they are the core features at the end, where people say, this is a great feature. I didn't understand it at the beginning, and it was shit. But now I have to say, this is the best feature of the game. right? So you can see that over a long period of time, these perceptions of features change a lot. So yeah, and one also one thing that we really liked is you have all this tracking data, as you were seeing in the, in the previous uh, uh, presentation as well, right? Steam has some data, and you collect your own data. So when you just have the data, you sometimes don't know, right? There's some oddity in the data, and you're like, something has changed, but we don't know what, what's actually happening. And then you look at the game, and you have to come up with your own explanation. But when you do these diary studies, you can actually go back to your diary study and see if this oddity was in the diary study as well. And then you can see what were people saying. And then you know, oh, OK, I understand now. They had the problem already. We didn't focus on that. And now it's in the live game as well. And then you know, basically, what you can do. And you don't have to look at the game again, right? So this is obviously a great thing. And the last point was for us. Um, Normally, and I will go into the, some more detail with that later, um, you get some just random indications for how to improve the game. But with the diary studies, because people are involved such a long time in the, in, in the study, they come up with really actionable feedback. They say, OK, this feature works like this, but if you change it in this and this way, it would work better, right? And so the development team gets this feedback right from the community, and it's, it's much better suited to just do something right away. So that worked really well for the dev team of Anno. They were really happy about, about this feedback. So you might ask yourself, how did we get all these cool key findings, right? So what kind of data did we collect, for example? So uh, as an example, um, we had this player submitted data, uh, I was saying uh, earlier. And so there's obviously some player data, the name, the day of the study, something like that, uh, like you play name or something. Then there's some status and statistical data, and you can see some of that in the screenshot over here, right? Number of islands settled or farmers on main, main islands, something like that. This is to correlate that with the tracking, right? Because you don't know really, does the tracking actually work? And then you have like two, two, two ways to get this data, and then you can see, okay, the tracking's actually working well, and players reporting the correct data. Then we always have this most negative, most positive experience, as you can see here in the what was the most negative experience you had during your session, right? People write down what was my most negative experience. Then we normally do these three most prominent emotions. And there is one, one hint I have to give. We have lists of emotions, because if you don't have lists of emotions, people write any kinds of emotions, right? Tired is an emotion, obviously. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so we were like saying, OK, we look up uh, uh, what kind of emotions are actually in, in, in psychology, what are the uh, core of, of emotions, and then you use a list where it's just a pull-down menu, and you can select positive emotions, and it's just these six, right? And not something more. Then it's easier to correlate, right? So most prominent emotions, and once again, a small comment, why did you feel this emotion, right? And then also, we let people rate their average daily fun or something like that, mostly on a five or seven point scale, so that you at least have some graph how they liked the game during the study. And then we normally have this retention self-assessment, or when, when there's a huge amount of uh, player, that you, we let them drop out. But normally, we do this retention self-assessment, so we basically ask, would you continue playing after today? And then players say yes or no. Or maybe. And then they say, once again, why would they continue? Or why won't they continue, right? <clears throat> and um, yeah. And then one thing which you always have to be <laughs> wary of is open comments. Because open comments can mean 
not a lot of feedback, but can also mean lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and even more feedback. Like some people, some players are really so keen to tell you what they think of the game, uh, uh, so that that they like write huge walls of text with all the feedback that about the game, and then that can be a lot of work, obviously. Mm. But also, it's nice to to give them a chance to say something about your game, right? So. And then the other stuff I was saying uh, about is the tracking. We call that telemetry in, in Ubisoft. So um, as you can see here, this is just some tracking uh, data. It's a bit uh, co confusing to, to look at. So th that's just the, the stuff that you uh, include in the game. So you, spoke, so you speak to the dev team. And then you have things like, um, for example, game flow, vehicles, construction, population, logistics, expedition, faction interactions. So to f each of these areas in the game basically has several questions, and all these questions have several values attached that are tracked during the game. For example, uh, vehicles, ship production, how many ships were produ produced, right? And so you have a number, like one chip at the beginning, then two, then three, and so on. And then you have these data points that don't help you at the beginning because it's just data, and then you have to do something with that. And then I will get into that later on. And so. I was saying the methodology is flexible. So one thing that you can do here is you can basically personalize the diary study ex exactly to the needs of the dev team. So what did we do in this uh, regard? One thing that the team wanted us to do was basically keep a really close communication with them. So they, they, they created a mailing list, especially for the diary study, so that we could like write to, for example, the whole of QC when we had a a QC-related question, like something wasn't working in the game, or when game design needed some feedback, we sent them an email. And what we would do with this, uh, we would basically create a summary of two, every two days, and then send them what was the main issues, what were people saying, what happened, stuff like that. And then they came up with some things like, oh, OK, so there's a, there seems to be some problem. Maybe ask these players to send in some safe games or something like that. So there was close communication. And as I was saying, certain feedback then triggered direct changes. So sometimes they would go and create an overnight version where when the player would come back to the next day, there was an update. And then the game was kind of fixed or changed. And then they could get new feedback on the new feature right away. And what was also great, because we were in the middle, the middleman basically, like when there was some harsh feedback coming our way from the players, we like made it nice and friendly and sent that to the dev, right? So that, because like when you read your forums, sometimes that can be really harsh. And, but now as you have this filter function, that, that it, it works much better. And then also you have these players, right? So you have to keep a communication with the players. And what did we do? Yeah, we asked them for a Skype account. I mean, this is kind of old school Skype nowadays, right? Who uses Skype? But still, most players had a Skype account, at least from the past. And then they said, OK, whatever. So what, we, what did we do? We, we stayed in close communication with them, which means some of us were actually working in the evenings, right? Because that's the time when people play their games. So we were at home, like running our laptops, and then we were chatting with the players. And what is sometimes interesting, some of these players were actually playing and communicating at the same time. So they were playing, and then there was some wait time, and then they wrote to us, I have been building a ship now, and there's this problem. Can you help me? And you would just say, no, no, you continue playing. But so due to that, you would get feedback that is similar to something like a think aloud test. And that was also nice. And then uh, we could also compile. I mean, Skype has a function where you can ha basically have a text file with all the communication. So we could compile this data for the dev team as well. And then what also was nice, when we had problems, the dev team could ask us, you know, please uh, ask this player about the problem and make him do this and that. And then we can see what happens. So sometimes there would be cast tasks coming our way, and we would use these tasks to, to task the player to do something, right? And this worked really well. And then, obviously, you always have these players that are really enthusiastic. So we had one player who created videos, for example, or lots of players created screenshots with explanations of problems and stuff that they didn't like. And so we had an upload platform so they could share their stuff basically just between us and them. Uh, and then you could 
use that as well. And then also, I was showing you the whole dots thing, and you were like, what? So that is what, what the analytics team built from these dots, right? You have this, these dashboards, and they are live, so you can use them while the diary study is running. You can every day just go into the dashboard, see what's going on in your game, and you have these statistics like which expeditions per company did the player do the most or something like that. And this is really great. Um, it's available for us, so we can look how our players playing. You can see the play time, stuff like that. But also, uh, the dev team can look into some details and can ch can check if some of their questions are already asked after a few days, uh, answered after a few days. And you can also use this data to correlate it with what players are saying, which is also really nice. And so, as a nearly last point, let me compare and contrast it with a, a methodology that most people, I think, do, which is basically just playtesting, so inviting someone to play your game, right? You do that. Uh, and we do that normally as an observational test. So we have this diary study methodology that we use a lot in Anno, and we have this observational test where you invite people into the lab uh, at our place, uh, which we did a lot as well for, for Anno, actually. And the interesting was that both of them have their benefits, right? So, so one of the things is that um, the diary study always resulted in some kind of actionable feedback because the players had so much time, were so involved, and then they had time to basically tell you what you could change or what would be great to change. While when we did this observational test, because you're just standing behind the player, seeing what he does, or you have a recording of the screen, you kind of have to guess and then you just have these indications of problems, right? This is, this is one advantage from our, from our side of the diary studies. And also, uh, because the observational test, normally you invite them and then they're at your lab and they play like a day or something, it's eight hours, right? Or six hours or something. So that's basically just the onboarding experience. But if your game, like Anno, runs over 50, 60, 80 hours of playtime, then with the diary study, you get like, uh, long-term motivations and disappointments. You, you get all the data over the, over, over the time, right? Um, then also what's different, obviously, is the player in the diary studies in his own environment, and then you get some of these influences that you also have to sort out, which can be a problem. But on the other hand, when you have the lab environment, you can control a lot of the, the surroundings, so you get your data. But then again, it's not the typical way you play, right? You're in an office. Someone is standing behind you, there's a camera recording your face, that's totally different than when you're at your home. So there's different kinds of, of, of things that have influence on the data. What we say is basically that the, the observational data gives you slightly cleaner data because you as a user researcher can like, minimize the effects, uh, where, while in the diary study you have all these subjective experiences and there's lots of uh, cognitive biases involved in there, right? Um, and then, uh, what, what, what comes from point one, basically, is that there's suggestions by players in the diary study, and there is sometimes suggestions by players as well for this observational test. They say something in between, but normally the team has to come up with their own su su suggestions. They have these indications of problems, but they don't know what to do, right? So that's the difference. And then also, at the observational test, you have the short, intense play time, so you're right there, you have to play while in the diary study is lots of playtime, right? It's really long. So as I was seeing, no one had done this before. And as like all the talks so far were more on like indie games, I thought, like, how might I help you with this diary study methodology? And I have to say, yeah, can you do this on a budget, actually? And I lecture at the university, Media Design University as well. My students always say, no, that's too complicated. We can't do this, right? But I say, try, because. You can do this actually on a budget. You can do this with a small number of participants, five or something. OK, then you have this problem with feedback, but whatever, at least you have some feedback. You can ask friends and family or your coworkers, right? Because when some coworkers don't work like directly involved in the game, then you can ask them. And they can play, for example. You can keep it really short, just make for example, ask them to just report something that's bad, right? Every day, report what's bad, or something like that. Then just have a few questions, or maybe just one question. Definitely skip on the open questions, <laughs> because then you don't have to read all the stuff, right? This is an easy way to save a lot of time. Um, 
use tools. There's several tools out there, like Look, uh, Look Back Fellow or something like that. So that there's lots of tools that you can use. You can also do that with the basic tools. You can just do it with Word or with Mail, right? But when you use these professional tools on the web, uh, it's all in one place. You get the data, it's already there. You have analytics in the tool, so that's, that's really easy. And if you don't have the time, sometimes you can even use the trial version of the tool, right? So you can do this on a budget, actually. So that was all of that. Thank you. I think that was a lot, actually. Uh, sadly, we, we don't have a lot of time, as he was saying. Um, so when you have questions, uh, we are here, we have our own booth over there. You come visit the booth and ask us questions, and I will be over there maybe, and you can ask me questions there later. Perfect. Thanks a lot.